magnetic insight into a debilitating condition. The connections are not correct, and the processes aren't correct, and there's some sort of deficit. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Just as twins can be the result of unusual circumstances at conception or in early development, so can many kinds of birth defects. Early errors in the number or structure of chromosomes can lead to birth defects like Down syndrome. About Down syndrome, the human body is made up of cells. Normally, the nucleus of each cell contains 23 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46. In babies born with Down syndrome, each cell contains an extra chromosome. Chromosome number 21 for a total of 47 chromosomes in each cell. This condition is usually caused by an error in cell division in the earliest stages of development. Almost 50 years ago, early genetic researchers discovered the presence of this additional chromosome in people with Down syndrome. They assumed that it alone caused the physical and developmental disabilities shared by people with Down. But today, our increasing ability to look at specific genes within each chromosome is giving scientists a clearer picture of what causes the condition. <laughs> About one in 800 to 1,000 births results in a child with Down syndrome. It is the most common of all chromosomal abnormalities. Although individuals born with Down syndrome have physical and cognitive disabilities ranging from mild to severe, they are able to lead full lives with good medical care and education. Good morning, Esther. How are you? Good. How are you, How are you doing? Individuals with Down syndrome can often have lifespans into their 50s and perhaps more. The aging process, though, is somewhat accelerated. Individuals with Down syndrome are at much higher risk for having an Alzheimer-like condition develop in their central nervous system, in their brains. And this leads to a decline in some of abilities that may begin as early as their 20s or 30s. So what is it about this extra chromosome that affects the brain of people with Down syndrome? Scientists at the University of Wisconsin in Madison are using the latest tools in genetic research to look at each gene to better understand what happens in development and why. We started a study looking at uh, post-mortem fetal tissue collected from Down syndrome patients where we knew that the fetal tissue had Down syndrome and we isolated stem cells from that fetal tissue. We asked the question, are there any genetic differences in the human stem cells grown from Down syndrome when compared to non-Down syndrome stem cells? The use of fetal stem cell research is controversial, but it's giving scientists an unprecedented window into early human development. Before human stem cells were available, the only way scientists could look at the genes that caused Down syndrome was by studying mice. But mice don't even have a chromosome 21, making the research a far less accurate gauge of what happens in humans. I think one of the key developments of modern medicine and biology is the mapping of the human genome. And the other key development is the ability to grow stem cells in the, t in the dish. And those two things have come together. And I think by locking those two things in, we can learn an awful lot about biology and these diseases. When scientists grow stem cells in the lab, they use the ability of the cell to replicate itself. Genes give each cell the directions it needs to determine what kind of cell to become. Through modern technology, laboratory scientists can turn genes on and off. This allows researchers to control the development of these cells. Using stem cells that were programmed to make brain tissue, Dr. Clive Svensson and his team grew these neural stem cells into balls of brain cells called neurospheres to help them find out how the cells replicate. 
They wanted to see if the neurocells grown from the down sample replicated and developed in the same way as a non-down or control sample. The first question we asked was, are they growing at the same rate? Is there something wrong with the division pattern in these cells? And they all grew at exactly the same rate. But then when we said, let's stop them growing now, turn the stem cells off, and turn them into neurons, that was when we saw the first big difference. And at that stage, we saw a dramatic difference between the downs uh, cells and, and the non-down cells, in that the down cells were very slow in making neurons come out of these neurospheres. Since these neurons are the building blocks of the human brain, this finding correlated to the developmental disabilities experienced by people with Down syndrome. This is the edge of a neurosphere, and the cells have started migrating out. Everything in green here is a new neuron that's been born from this neurosphere. And this is a non-Downs neurosphere. This is what we normally see. If you look over this side, this is another neurosphere, but in this case from a Downs patient, from fetal tissue from Downs. And I think you can see the dramatic reduction in these green cells that are crawling out, which means that the Downs neurospheres are making far less neurons in this particular model. The researchers also discovered that not only did the Down syndrome cells create fewer neurons, but the connections between the neurons, which formed the connections within the brain, were compromised. So a neuron needs to put out uh, fibers and growth in order to connect to other neurons, and that's the basis of the brain. And we noticed that these fibers and outgrowth from the neurons were drastically reduced in the Downs cases. So they weren't putting out uh, connections to other cells in a normal way. The team then used a sophisticated gene analysis method to determine what might be causing changes in the neuron growth. This gene expression analysis allows researchers to actually see what genes are active and working or turned on at various times during development. A breakthrough occurred when they discovered that two important genes involved in human brain development were completely missing from the down sample. These genes are located on chromosomes other than the one that appears three times in people with Down syndrome. We assumed that the changes would be on chromosome 21. What we were really surprised about is genes on other chromosomes were decreased, significantly decreased. So this is, must be an effect of 21, but it's now coming back and having a down, what we call downstream effect on the expression of genes on another completely different chromosome. So does this knowledge mean that scientists have now identified all the genes responsible for Down syndrome? I can clearly say right now, we don't think they're the only genes. So now clearly the way forward is to go to the microchip analysis and look with a microchip at 33,000 genes simultaneously, which we can do now actually very quickly, and get those genes and say, what is the total number of genes that are different between the Downs and the, and the non-Downs tissue? And those are the experiments we're currently underway here at the Weizmann Center. We are only beginning to understand the role genes play in Down syndrome, but this research has the potential to shed light on other diseases too. By getting a glimpse into the window of early human development, we're probing a little deeper into the secrets of the sequence. That's life. I'm Lucky Severson. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.